Got you guys out there waiting. Tonight is November 11th. This is Game Breaker After Dark. Joining us like he does every week. Well, I guess both of you guys join us every week. I don't know. It's I can't segregate you guys like that. But uh, joining us from Tankspot.com, the one and only Mr. Josh Allen, aka Lore. I like the Kanye specs, man. Those are uh, yeah. How much did those cost I, you? Uh, <laughs> about three seconds. Three whole seconds. I don't know how you saved mm -hmm. up that long, but um, yeah. kudos to you, sir. I don't know if I can hold on to my time that well. Also, I can apparently give myself a high five. If I like, I do like this, and then we wait a second. Hang on, go away. Yeah, high five to myself. Wow, yeah. that's like Inception almost. Yep. And joining us again like he does every week. Why am I the only one without cool glasses? What is this? Why did I not... Did not get this memo. Oh, you can even make them change colors? Oh, no, you're drawing. Kanye glasses on the fly. I don't have this ability. <laughs> this is too mad. But it's the one and only Darnell. Man, I don't know how to use this thing. What the hell? Scribble all over, please. <laughs> this is the dumbest ass thing. Scribble, scribble. What the hell? I don't know, Darnell. I think you look better. All right, how to get rid of this? Hold on a minute. What button I put? How do I get rid of it? No. Hey, how do I, what do I got to do with this stuff? How do I get rid of it? Uh, Escape, I believe. Is the button. Oh. Damn, it's magic. It just disappears. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we've already got someone on the line, so let's jump in and start taking you guys, uh, your guys' viewer questions. Call you on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name. Who just had your question? This is Levi from Tulsa. Ooh, Skype's so, sounding just wonderfully clear. What's up, Levi? I can actually understand. Yeah, you may remember me from my very uh, garbled Skype call from uh, a week ago. So I, yes. I may also not. <laughs> That's yeah. actually lower. I don't think you heard me at all. Yeah. Um, uh, tinfoil hats. Tinfoil hats. Uh, I was wondering what were some of the best tinfoil hat theories uh, with some validity that you guys have heard and from recently released MMOs or expansions. Uh, Swotor, WoW, Mop, Guild Wars 2, Rift, to name a few. You're just that caller that uh, like wants a whole entire show about tinfoil hats. <laughs> You've been waiting I to do. ask this question, haven't I you? I have, sir. I get a really weird echo when I talk like this with this thing. I don't know how Gary does it. Tinfoil hats. See, that's transmissions. It's blocking all of them. I'm putting them back in your brain. That's how it works. <laughs> tinfoil hats. That must be. All right, it's a tinfoil hat moment. So, uh, do you guys got anything off the top of your head that you remember from recent years? Is in like stuff that happened in the past or stuff that we're working like might be coming up? I don't know, Cause... Levi. You're still out there. Uh, yes, where, sir. Where, where are you? Uh, where are you wanting this 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 topic of conversation to go to? Uh, basically anything that's happening now, from now forward, uh, anything that's supposed to uh, happen uh, well, that sounds wackadoodle but may have some validity to it. Gosh. So we got to dig into the future and we're put on the spot. Yeah. Kind of kind of throwing me in the spot here for a second. <laughs> it's like, throw, man. Throw us right under the bus, too. Hey, Lord, come up with something crazy. Uh, <laughs> Barack Obama is Titan. Damn! Oh, damn! <laughs> um, Blizzard has been there? secretly oh, developing him for the past four years. <laughs> Man, I don't, I don't have anything that immediately springs to mind. Like, uh, I mean, obviously, there's the stuff that's going on with Titan, with like Rob Pardo and how he was on the Titan team and now he's on the WoW team. There's stuff going on with. Um, I think there was something weird going on with the SWOTOR free-to-play. I remember hearing a whole bunch about how, uh, well, there was a whole bunch going on about how they were going to, like, limit hot bars or something, and then they, they decided they were going to give you more hot bars, but still not enough hot bars. But that's that's not so much a conspiracy theory as just EA being EA. Um, man, I, I really don't... 
I, I hate to I hate to be a disappointment, but I I don't have I don't have my crazy on for the moment. I'm not. Well, I feel like tinfoil hat though. moments got to come from like like validity. It's not something that you can just be like, hey, I you know what? I'm gonna come up with a tinfoil hat moment right here. It's it's got to actually be something for it to to turn into an actual legitimate tinfoil hat moment. Yeah. Yeah. Organic. I don't know. I guess. Uh, I guess. I guess we gotta we gotta disappoint for this uh, this time. Maybe maybe next week we'll have something. <laughs> I don't think we'll just set, we'll have to get Bungie to like start driving <laughs> around Blizzard headquarters again or something. See what they can yes. come up with that. All right, let's start out to another caller and see uh, if we can get a question that we can't answer. You're on the line with Gamebreaker After Dark. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from. Uh, it's Elizabeth from Phoenix, Arizona. How are you guys? Wonderful. Hello. How are you? Good. Um. It's it's probably not a question you can answer, but I'm throwing it out there anyways. Again, it's about Guild Wars 2. Um, oh, snap. Uh-oh. Oh, we come just... on. We, come on. We get, we get a girl on the phone. Then go, what the? Hello? Elizabeth? Hello? Damn. Uh, Call we back. To we, we totally Call just got back. Put on... <laughs> we got put on hold. Um, For now, all right, we're going to try and figure out what's going on over here. We'll get her back on the line so that she can ask that question. For now, though, let's throw it out to a Twitter question. Uh, Jose Lopez wanted to know, nay, or actually asked, name a video game that you would deem as your secret shame, Woo Darnell Woo. I never heard of that game. Woo Darnell Woo. That sounds good. That's, that's an underground game. Mm hmm. Uh, secret shame. Do you guys have any that, that, you, uh, that you guys like to play or um, that you don't really want to admit to? Man, what game is going to be really embarrassing if you say that you like it right now? Uh, man, this one, I guess this one's tough for me because I don't really get embarrassed by games that I play. It just kind of... You telling me you don't play Hello Kitty Island Adventure? I don't. No, I, I That really is the don't. best game ever. No, see, it's, it's hard for you because you're a real person, that's why. <laughs> so I just make some up. I'd be like, yeah, you know, my little pony and Rainbow Bright take on Jim and the Holograms. Yeah, see, I play that video game and see, yeah. it don't matter because I ain't even real. See, there you go. I soaked it all up for you. Yeah, I think much. for me, it, it, it's definitely, it's got to be, it's, it's mine probably more sways to console. But I don't think I've ever gone into something that I'm I'm directly like like ashamed of playing because nine times out of ten, if I don't like have like a guilty I, I don't know. Oh I got it. All right. Um I don't play it anymore, but I did for, for a really long time was I got involved in the Yu-Gi-Oh video games that were like card games like but in video game form. And I I always would play the hell out of those games to the point where now I'm embarrassed that I even mentioned it. So that's that's yeah, I mean, probably I guess my it, secret shame video game. Is that embarrassing though, really? I, guess I, I don't know if it's really embarrassing. Big... I mean, it's, 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 but that's, that's probably the one that I, that is like the one that I don't like openly admit that I play or, or like a Dragon Ball Z game. Like that's, that's probably as, as far as I go, but I still enjoy the game. So I mean, I don't wait, know. Wait, so Dragon Ball Z is okay with Yu-Gi-Oh? That, that's not okay? Is that how it works? <laughs> no, because the masses actually like Dragon Ball Z. Yu-Gi-Oh is one of oh, those. Oh, so you're just a follower. Like, I see what's going on. Yeah, okay, you're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm playing this game that nobody likes. I'm ashamed of it. Oh, that's you're it. Like, okay. You're like some kind of weeaboo hipster. Is that what this is? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, I, do you guys have any games like that? Like, even dating back to years ago, because I think the last time I played a Yu-Gi-Oh game was high school, maybe college. So, um, I don't know. Do you guys have anything that in the past that you kind of used to play that was kind of a guilty pleasure? I used to play The Sims a lot, and then I got fed up with EA, so I don't play The Sims anymore. But I used to... Okay, here we go. Here we go, internet. Oh, damn. Oh, this internet. is the moment! This is what, everybody pay attention, this is the moment! This is the power right here, go! <laughs> this is where my career ends. No, um, me and a friend, we used to rent, like, every day. We never bought it, because we didn't want to be ashamed of owning it. But we would rent it, like, every day. The Sims for PlayStation 2. And we would... Was it PlayStation 2? It might have been GameCube. I don't remember. It was around those days. And we would play it split screen for hours upon hours upon hours. And 
literally all we would do was just like make houses and put people in them and like just straight up play the sims like we weren't doing anything crazy with it we weren't like oh we're going to have the secret lesbian fun house or anything like that which every every adolescent male has who's ever played the sims has done that no we weren't even doing that we were just playing the sims on split screen for hours it was mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just just like that all right i'm pretty sure we got elizabeth back on the line so let's throw the question back out to her uh and get her guild wars 2 question elizabeth you out there yes i'm here wonderful, wonderful. darnell missed you i don't know if you could hear that darnell was really upset that you got put on hold. yeah it was a little so upset you know if you angry. if you if you are here to ask him out on a date you can do so now if yes not, answer your question actually aren't you still my best friend chef so you're gonna ask me on a date <laughs> no um, all right. <laughs> I got Let's move on quick. I got rejected. Let's move on. LOL. We were like, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so I, actually, my question was about groups in Terra. Right now, you can only have five people in a group, which is very frustrating. My guild does a lot of like coordinating guild events, like um, jumping puzzle mania, smash and grab, world versus world, and you can't really see all of your friends. It's hard to coordinate people when you only have groups of five people. Do you think that maybe they'll eventually add a feature that you can just add like a guild group, have like a guild group specifically to do special events? So like a, almost like a raid sort of setup. Yeah, like but a, only for like guild members. So I mean, you can see everyone from map. Yeah, it'd be, a, it'd be a good idea, I think. I, I wouldn't be opposed to the idea at all it seems like something that would make a lot of sense it can be really really hard to organize people when you're just sort of just sort of uh floating around uh and you're like oh, where are you where are you i can't i don't know where where are you on the map and you're like trying to discuss with each other where you actually are if you can't even see each other mm -hmm. um i think I, I want to say it's something that there, that is either on on the way or something that I remember seeing a discussion about it being on the way. I really don't know, but I, I can't remember off the top of my head right now. I apologize. I haven't been paying super close attention to like upcoming features in Guild Wars 2, but it does seem like something that, yeah, absolutely, that would make a lot of sense for them to have. Well, I thought you said... Did she not say... I thought you said Terra. I, no? I said Terra, no, but Guild I think Wars she meant Guild Wars 2. She did say Terra in the question, but she meant Guild Wars 2. Yeah. I was oh, so internet, she confused no. Terra and Guild Wars 2. Oh, everyone freak <laughs> out. Leave a comment below. There we go. I just quit Terra. I just quit Terra to play Guild oh, good. Wars 2. So, good. Yeah. Good choice. I like the BAMs. I love soloing BAMs as a little answer. That's one of my favorite things to do. But whatever. So then what do you yeah, guys think about... my favorite thing to do, too. I'm just saying. What do you guys think about the potential of... <laughs> Notice how she didn't say no, LOL, <laughs> Shab. Shut your mouth. Don't giggle. So what do you guys think of then the potential of it actually opening up to bigger groups? I mean, I, I think the biggest problem with guild like allowing something like that would be the the back and forth between uh, realms and and overflow servers, wouldn't it? Well, I mean, well, the, it, I I joined the guild on uh, from a different realm, and now I'm on the same realm as them, and it's just something that we were bringing up because we do a lot of events like. Like, we'll, we'll get together and we'll all just bust out different jumping puzzles, or we'll do, like, a smash and grab, or we'll just decimate an entire map and, you know, you know do, like, funny macros and stuff when we kill a bunch of, face roll a bunch of stuff. But I just so thought it should be more like we could get, like, a guild group specifically so you can see your guild mates on the map and be able to interact with them in a better way. When you're doing it, it's like, gonna be large, larger than five people or something, right? Yeah. yeah. Would it be yeah, something that? Larger. Would it be something that you specifically need a group for, or would it work fine if you were just able to see guild members on the map? Because that's something that um, add-ons have been doing for a long time in World of Warcraft, where right. you can just see on your on the map, just in general, where like if if the only concern is where on the map are they? Uh, well, then that, you know, that's like something that socializing, being able being able to. Um, we do world versus world too, but um, just different things. I'm kind of new to the guild, and it was just a question that they brought up. They're like, why hasn't this happened yet? And it would be amazing if, if they could do something like this. So I was just kind of bringing it to your attention, trying to figure out mm. what you thought. 
Yeah, it'd be nice, you know, if you could like check a button that said, yes, allow all my guild members to see me anywhere in the world versus world or anywhere in the guild world's world or something like that, but, you know, I don't well, know if I mean, it's, it's like Not everyone mm -hmm. in the guild participates in the events that we do, so it'd be more party specific so that, you know, okay, well, so-and-so's out on a raid, but we're going to start this other event, and it'd be nice to have a larger than five people group for that. Damn, that sounds like a whole nother mechanic. They got a, they already got the party system. Then they gotta go ahead and build a whole nother thing for that. Hmm. What well, they, they do it in uh, W Dub? So yeah, why not just use that one? That works. There we go. Problem solved. The end. Of reading that. Go ahead and send me a check anytime you're ready. <laughs> 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 all right, let's uh, let's sort out to a Twitter question uh, and move on just uh, so that we can get all these questions in that we got today. Um, no, look, he's all mad. He's all mad. He's all like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah okay, go, go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're hanging up on you now. No, uh, <laughs> uh, I, got, I, got, no. I, gotta, I gotta throw it out to uh, to another person see if I can get a date. Um, all right, wow. Sarah over at uh, over on Twitter wants to know what game would you like to see a sequel to or remade in the current gen or next gen? I'm assuming she's Descent. talking console here because Descent. Josh, I think I just fell in love with you. Will you go on a date with me? I loved the Descent games. <laughs> Damn, damn no. No, do it, do it. You're all cool. No. Uh, Descent. All right, go ahead though, because go ahead. You you had something you had something to do with Descent, uh, didn't you? I uh, I used to do I used to do interviews for a Descent three fan site. I would like interview random community members and stuff. It was, it was I was like fifteen, and it was like. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do descent stuff. By the way, I didn't hit puberty until I was like 28. I'm gonna do <laughs> descent stuff. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, and I got you know I hung out with the developers a little bit. We had like this party and everything. It was so cool. And I was like, yeah, it's awesome. But yeah, no, descent was one of the first games that I got really, really into. Like when I was first getting into gaming in general, that was one of the first games that I was like, okay, I'm just going to spend all day every day playing descent. I would love to see a sequel to that series come back. And with Interplay on, like, actually starting to actually kind of sort of do stuff again, maybe just a little bit, I feel like that might be something that's actually possible. Current gen or next gen? Rock and roll it's, it's, racing, yeah, <laughs> down, down, yeah, racer. boom, 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 yeah, 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 uh. uh I want to see... Shameless, shameless movie plug, which if you guys haven't seen this movie, you need to go see it right now. I want to see Wreck-It Ralph go next gen. Isn't Mostly because that they, movie was amazing. They have to be making that game. They have they, to be well, making... It, it's, it, it's, it's actually playable uh, in arcade form at some of the, the theaters around here. You can play it as an arcade game at the theaters, participate in high scores, and win prizes. Uh, Man, I you think... know what game I'd really like to see? World of Warcraft Mists of Pandaria. I think that one should be released. <laughs> I'm saying an HD re-release. That was the question. What game do I want to see be remade for this gen or next gen? I want to see Wreck-It Ralph on the PS10. Man. What does that mean? Whatever. I don't <laughs> understand what HD re-release. I mean, you know, I, you know, I, I'm playing World of Warcraft at 1920 by 1080, which you know, technically, you know, that's you know, that's that's you know, it's HD. I'm just wondering if you want to go ahead and elaborate on what exactly you mean by you know. I want 4K HD, resolution. You know? I want I want to be playing World of Warcraft. At, like I watched Retina display. <laughs> yeah, red red footage quality video gaming. No? Look at this dude, look at he makes he goes and works on a couple of TV shows all of a sudden. He's all like <laughs> red cameras. Look at me. I'm I'm talking about red cameras and full K footage and such. I'm just saying there's there's more than what there's more than ten eighty. So don't don't just cap it there. It's gonna happen. If you if you think that if you think that 4K isn't gonna become a new standard for for definition, I I I, I think you're crazy because that's gonna happen. It's not gonna just. Oh yeah, of course it is. And we're still gonna call it HD because we're dumb. That's how we work. We don't <laughs> call it 4K. They're gonna be like, oh, that's like HD XL. Damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, we got another caller on the line, so let's throw it out to them and see what they gotta ask. Call you on the line with Gay Burger after dark. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from, and uh, tell us your question. Ask us. Hi, my name is uh, Dan Costelli. I'm from uh, Bellingham, Washington. And, you know, yeah, we're seeing a lot. You know cool... we're getting high over there right now. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Had to happen. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Um, so we're seeing a bunch of, like, cool features in, like, many different MMOs. And since Blizzard likes to sometimes take those cool features, would you like to maybe 
what feature would you like to see? Maybe the upcoming Titan tinfoil hat optional. Well, all right. So we're oh okay. Uh, and it, for Titan, three faction PvP. I think that's that's yeah, that a was, must. With that was one that of the things I was thinking too. Yeah, three faction PvP. I'd like to see more drop in, drop out rating. Uh, but that's not something that anybody's really doing right now. Um, man, yeah, no, I, I'm I'm gonna say three faction. Like, if we're talking about s just swiping stuff from other games right now, I think three three faction PvP is definitely one of the the hot things at the moment. That a lot of different like uh, rifts doing it with conquest. Uh, obviously, Guild Wars Two has World vs World. Uh, lots of different games are actually doing that now, so I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I, I don't really have anything else that's super like. I guess the other thing that I'd like to see is a an actually good action focus. I'm hitting my microphone. Actually good action focused combat system. Now let me take all my like, answers. Okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, it's all right. Well, I mean, like, like Terra and and Raiders had action focused combat, but it ended up feeling like really slow and boring to the point that I was like, okay, this would be faster paced if I had hot bar. And then Guild Wars 2 has action combat, and it's definitely a step in that direction, but it's still not full, like, I'm left-clicking to swing my thing, and I'm, like, dodging around. Well, obviously, you're dodging, but it's not, like... It, it doesn't feel like an action game. It still feels like a hot bar MMO to me. So I would like to see something like that in Titan actually done properly. Maybe they can make it a first-person shooter. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll just... Maybe they'll <laughs> just, just <laughs> Planet Side 2. Just take everything Planet, that's Planet happening Side right now. Titan, there we go. <laughs> Planet Titan 2, yeah. I mean, is there anything else, really, that we even have to, to pull from? We've got uh, Elder Scrolls, which they're mostly just doing kind of medieval three-faction. We've got uh, Guild Wars, which... Heart Quests. I, I think a lot of people felt... Um, the, the not even hard quest. The dynamic content in in uh, Guild Wars could maybe be something that gets adapted over into uh, Titan. Um, did did Star Wars really bring anything to the table that that should be transferred over? Um. Yeah, you know they didn't have like fully voiced content or anything like that. You know, it would have been really great if they put that in, but apparently, you know, they totally dropped the ball on that one. I guess. I did totally forget about fully voice content. They've got Hutball. Let's see Hutball over there. Um, other than that, though, I mean, I, I think that's really it. Three faction PvP is definitely the way that the the industry is is kind of shifting at the moment for MMOs. That that would be something that they absolutely, in my opinion, have to to go with uh, for Titan. So let's throw it out to another question and uh, see what else is going on out there. So you're on the call. You're on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from. Which I think he just dropped out. Maybe. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are I'm you? Hello. From Alberta, Hello. Canada. Mm -hmm. You're from Canada. Canada you. <laughs> um, we love Canada here. My question here. is: Say, in the next World of Warcraft expansion, they plan to y introduce yet another race, but you get to vote for one of the three. Um, would it be Naga, Arakoa, or Furbolg? Naga, Arakoa, or Furbolg? If we're you're saying like they they hold like an election or something for yes. Uh, yes. what the new cross faction race is going to be, man. Mm -hmm. Furbog, no, no, because we just had Pandaren. Yeah. You want another? Yeah, you want another furry? Well, could Naga, could Naga could do a huggable moonkin. That's all. Do you think? Do you think that Naga could work at all as a faction? Or that that seems? I, I mean, I guess. Goblins it barely have been works way, as a Naga mouse. It's like, gotta be Naga. I don't know if it'll work as a faction. It barely works Damn. as a mouse. Oh, watch out! There's DRM on that mouse. Oh, look out, Lo. No, it's the whole thing on the internet. It's reporting it's all your data. <laughs> oh, thank God. Ooh, ooh, that was close. Uh, I mean, to me, I, I don't know. I feel I like Naga okay. has been one of those races that, that has always kind of stood out as being one of the... Uh, opposing NPC factions, and it would be—I I, think—it would be very disjointing to play as a Naga. I know there are a lot of out, uh, players out there that want to see it as a playable race, but I don't know if I could get behind it. It's gotta be Naga. Come on, it gotta be Naga. We'd be like, yeah, always all my Nagas. Was like, yeah, and we could do all those things, pretend that we ain't trying to be racing, but we is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> about Nagas and stuff. See, look, I almost messed up right there myself. You see how? <laughs> see, it's gonna happen. Yeah. I think, was I think of the three, Naga would have the highest chance of actually becoming a race. Uh, well, just from like what, what Blizzard else? would do. Furblog. Furblog. 
Fur ball. Fur ball. You, it, fur ball is, it is a very long, long your diary that's covered in hair. It's a whole fuzzy. I've always said fur blog. It's just, I don't know. It's how I say it. All right, leave me alone. What was the third one? Fur blog is that thing that you do late at night that you hope nobody finds out about. And then stream it to the internet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Only if you have a razor mouse, that's all. Uh, what was the third faction? <laughs> Arakoa. Oh, that's right. The bird dudes from Burning Crusade. Yeah, yeah. You don't think they'd have a chance of making it as a faction? They'd probably make it before anything else. They're more humanoid, like you know, all the stuff, all the armors and stuff will kind of work with them more. What are you gonna put? What are you gonna put on a damn on a naga? Come on! Oh, look at these greaves I got. Oh, I can't. Okay, we'll just can't put those on. Then, I suppose. All right. Well, the, I'll just wear around my neck like dangly balls or something. Hmm? What snake balls? Is that what we're getting to? No, now? like like you know, like rearview mirror hanging that dais, and my greaves gonna go. Never mind. It's old now. Forget it. Go. <laughs> All right, I'm not going with uh, with Naga. I think I think Arakoa makes the most sense. Um, because for blog, I'm gonna say it again. For blog is too for close blog, to Morgan damn. and uh, and Pandaren, so I don't think they would. I don't think that would get the vote. I think that, that might get the popular vote, but I don't think that would get the electoral college. Um, damn. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's start out to another Twitter question. Uh, Val Gaming wants to know how do you think Blizzard will improve Diablo 3 in the expansion to retain players at level cap? Are people Man. still playing Diablo 3? <laughs> that, that was my first question. Is, are, is anyone actually still playing that? Don't you, don't you know that Torchlight 2 came out? It's, it's, you, can, you can get that game now. It's there. And then you can pretty uh, much mod it and make Diablo 3 in it pretty much. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I, I do not think I could imagine uh, since since beating it twice. I think I made it to hell. Since beating it twice, I have not had a desire to go back and play through that campaign again. Um, since beating it, I, I cannot imagine how people are still that into Diablo or, or or even still playing. Are they? Are they? Are they? Would they be just grinding through? Hardcore? Well, they added the they added the they added the Paragon levels, so there is like still progression to do now they did they did go back and add a whole bunch of stuff and the game is actually doing pretty well now in terms of uh actual gameplay it is actually better than it was before um i'm still not playing it because torchlight but um if we're looking at what they can add in an expansion to bring players back i think the big thing is that they're going to need to have like uh an actual like add on it like a whole new campaign, basically. Not just like they did with Diablo 2 Lord of Dar- Darkness, where they added an extra act. They're going to need a full campaign for a Diablo 3 expansion. Because if it's just one more act, I feel like people are going to look at it and just go, mm, nah, nah, not really. If we're talking about what can they do to bring the people who felt burned on Diablo 3 back to Diablo 3, they're going to need to They're gonna need to go all out. They're going to need to actually make the game that people wanted to begin with, not just... Uh, Add on to the game that people didn't really want. Now I see chat room. They're 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 bringing up a lot of uh, add PvP back to the game. I didn't realize they still haven't added PvP. That was something I remember playing that at BlizzCon last year and loving it. I could easily get involved into the arenas and the PvP system um, inside Diablo. That that hasn't been added yet. The problem with the PvP in Diablo is that it was doomed to fail. Like, it was screwed from the get-go, because they straight up said, we're adding this in as a diversion, we're not going to focus on it at all, it's not going to matter for anything. Like, there was that famous quote from, uh, I don't remember exactly which developer it was, but it was in an interview where they were, someone was asking them, okay, you're going to add PvP into Diablo 3, but is this going to be... Uh, is that going to affect the PvE of the game at all? And he was like, no, if at any point the PvP guy says, hey, this doesn't really work, we're going to say, hey, shut up, PvP guy, or something like that. He actually, like, hey, shut up, PvP guy, is part of what he said. It was something that I think a lot of people love the idea of, but there's no way for that to ever be balanced if they're approaching it from the standpoint of, if this affects PvE, we're not going to bother with it. That's not, you, you can't do that. So, I... I get that I get that people want it, and I get that it could be a lot of fun. And I honestly, I do think Blizzard should do it, but they're going to have to approach it from the the standpoint of fully supporting it and actually making it a feature in the game. They can't come out with PvP and be like, "Oh yeah, here you go." Especially with how 
how poorly Diablo 3 was received to begin with. They can't come out with PvP in Diablo 3 and be like, there you go, here's a fun little diversion that we're not really going to bother with too much. People will just look at that and go, well, this, this sucks, it is imbalanced and broken. You did it again, Blizzard. Is basically what's going to be the answer to that one. All right, Josh. Here's a here, here's a question from Twitter that I think's for uh, for you and me. This comes in from Jonathan uh, Jonathan Clement. Bear bubble hearth glyph allow bubble hearthing as a bear with symbiosis on a paladin. Force dance the entire time. Thoughts? Why are you casting symbiosis on a paladin? Because that way you can bubble hearth. <laughs> I don't That's... care what druids do. I don't know why you're throwing it. I don't care what druids do. <laughs> druids do symbiosis stuff, but I was like, whatever. I didn't even put that I on my I don't need your ability. I don't want this extra, extra tool. Give me wrath. I I'll throw wrath. it on you and gladly take your bubble, but uh, all right. That's fine. I Come on. Seeing, seeing a bear bubble hearth that'd be uh, dancing the whole entire time, that would be pretty awesome. I don't care what druids do. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line, druids, I guess, just do your own thing. All right, well, you know, I'll I'll Damn. enjoy that as much as I enjoy uh, my my glyph of transformation that turns me into a rideable mount, because that still makes me very happy. Um, let's throw it out to damn, a. Uh, you gonna hear food with my chef likes to get right? No, damn. Damn. What is damn? Why I need to shut my mouth for the rest of this episode? No. That's really the whole point of this show, Mike Schaffer. You realize the whole calling part is just kind of a diversion. They ain't nothing about that. It's all about getting you on it. We can beat you up to go and cry and stuff. So it's, it's sorry, I'm, I feel Mike bad. I kind of went up. Sorry, I'm, I I'm not trying to say you go home. I never should have agreed to be on the show. With Stop talking while I'm talking. Damn, yeah! I can't even talk the same words as enough. Damn. Throw it out to another question uh, over on Skype. Call her on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name. Talk to us. Chat with us. Tell us how your day's going. Was it all right? Hello. Hello. Hey, you just got you shut down again. <laughs> of course, you didn't hear any of that. Good job, yes. Jeff. Yes, we yes. can hear you. Okay. Ha, ha, uh, uh, hey, uh, tell us your name. Simon from Sweden. Oh. And Hi, Simon. My oh, day's fine. How are you? Excellent. We're doing awesome. What time is it over there? Uh, it's almost seven in the morning. Jeez. So it's oh, kind of late. <laughs> What's what's tomorrow? What's wait, tomorrow wait, 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 what? How fast are your internet? <laughs> My internet is uh, 24 bit, I think. Damn, Next see bits. all those bits? They got so many more bits than we got. Damn. What's going on, <laughs> Obama? You need to fix this damn internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, I hear down from, from from the grapevine that you got a question for us. So what's your question? Yeah, my question was, how long do you think World of Warcraft will last as a game? And when it it's not popular anymore, uh, what would you do afterwards as a player and as a, uh, like the work thing? So how long will World of Warcraft last? Will, yeah, how long will WoW last? Uh, and once it's gone, what will you do as a player and uh, as a internet, as an internet, basically? I don't, I don't really know how else to describe what I do, so I'm just gonna say as an internet. I mean, we've talked, we've talked a little bit about how long we've we've speculated World of Warcraft to last. I think for also for for different people, there's there's different standards of World of Warcraft dead, World of Warcraft successful. It's not like some people consider WoW dead and out like dying now, um, but it's still at i think over 9 million subscribers so is that over truly 10 million. dead for the over 10 million so is that truly truly dead for the 10 million that that are playing it probably not um i think it means when it shuts down like they're like whoa this is the end folks it's been a fun ride and click click wow so it's so completely done do you guys think it would ever get to that point would would blizzard ever walk away and say you know what we're just done servers are servers are being shut down yeah i'll probably 10 years I was like, yeah, ten, easy, easy 10 years. It'll happen eventually, I'm sure. Like, it, event, like, will we still be using computers to play games in 10 years? Who knows? Oh, so, damn. 
I'm sure, like, maybe we'll be, maybe we'll be playing them in our minds. Maybe we'll, like, wear those, like, goofy helmets that they had in, like, those 1980s sci-fi movies where we're like, oh, I can see a whole other world, and for some reason I can walk around and not bump into everything in my house. Uh, maybe, maybe they'll figure that one out. Maybe we'll do that in ten years. No, but I think, um, I think it's something that it'll shut down eventually. It's gonna take a while for it to get, for it to actually happen. I mean, EverQuest is still around. Like, it, lineage is still around it's going to take a long time for world of warcraft to get to the point because i mean yeah when you're when you're serving 10 million subscribers it's going to be something that has a pretty substantial overhead cost but they'll scale it down as the subscriber numbers fall just as it gets older and it'll i'm confident that eventually this the technology that they've got running it right now is not going to be all that expensive to keep it up anymore so i I don't know I i don't think it's something that will uh, a lot of people keep saying, oh, there's going to be this new game that's going to come out. This happens all the time. This new game's going to come out. It's going to straight up kill it. I don't think that's something that's ever actually going to happen. I think it's just something that as time goes on, the game will get older and older, and eventually people will stop playing it, and that's just going to be a slow a slow decline. When it does eventually happen, uh, who knows what I'm going to do at that particular point in time. In terms of a, as a player, who knows what I'm going to do, because... I, it's going to depend entirely on what other games are around when that actually happens. So that one's really tough to actually call. Uh, as a, uh, I guess a YouTuber, I guess would be what I'd say that I do. Uh, that just expanding coverage into different games as time goes on. That's something I'm already doing is covering different games. Uh, so that's a pretty, uh, pretty straightforward transition there, as far as I'm concerned. And you guys have kind of been. You guys have kind of been experiencing that. I don't want to say experiencing that a little bit now, but um, you know, for example, you you guys you guys are keeping your 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 gaming habits diverse. You guys aren't just solely playing World of Warcraft right now, oh, Josh. Yeah. You know, you'll switch it up and 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 try different games and and do different stuff around tap. Darnell, you're doing a whole bunch of let's plays. Um, so I think I think what you said, Josh, about how it it's it's really all dependent on um what you're playing at the time when it does come time that they're like, all right, server's shut down, it's over, that might be where you transition into next. I think the real question here that Jason just pointed out in the chat is when the World of Warcraft server is shut down, does that mean Darnell is dead? Are we actually discussing how long does Darnell have to live right now? Come on, you think about that. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh damn! I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! No! I'm gonna die someday soon! Oh! Take that! Wait, wait! Now. Yeah, that means Take I'm dead, that. right? Now who's gonna go cry themselves to sleep tonight? That'd be you. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, Wayne. but at least the girls ain't gonna say "lol." No. <laughs> <laughs> at least I knew that. I'll be like, company. "Yeah, I died," but you know what? Don't matter. I had sex. There we go. The end. <laughs> yeah. And Darnell is the kind of guy that a piece of him really does stay with you forever. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that piece. Jesus. Let's throw it out to a Twitter question before this just gets even more disturbing. Uh, Jeff Wiggins wants to know, hey, GB After Dark, if you could vote for a video game character for president, who would it be and why? I think IGN just held a, a, a video game presidential election, didn't they, if I'm not mistaken? I think I saw that. And uh, Drake won. From uh, Uncharted, I think you gotta. Well, you gotta. You you almost gotta. You gotta put like video game personality, character, politics behind it. Who would have your best interest at heart? You guys think of any iconic ones? I saw a really awesome promo. <laughs> nope. <laughs> didn't, even, didn't even realize that was there. Darnell, you didn't get president. People did. People didn't vote for you on the ballot. Hell no, stupid party system. I'm like, yeah, we want to do a party of Democratic Republic. I'm like, no. Nope. They're like, all right then. Um, That's all I got. What I mean, you know, I get them votes. What do you want? Rub it in my face? Don't yeah, matter, I had yeah. Sex. I'm gonna Go take every chance on. I can to rub whatever negative thing at you I can possibly do because I need to get back at you at some point. Mm-hmm. And then we'll be like, I feel like nope. all, the, all the hate during this show comes from you and nope. me. Nope. Oh, who, who's got the nope? Who's got the nope? I got the nope. Who's got the nope, Mike Chapman? Who got the nope? I got the nope. 
Just wonder if you know where the nope is, because it's right here. Uh, I just knocked the glasses off my face. All right. Um, I don't know. I I I, I had didn't. I, I saw this question before. I didn't put a lot of uh, a thought into it beforehand. Um, I think. Gosh, it's so tough. Like you can think of like the stereotypical people. You can think of like Zelda and Princess Peach and like all the people who've been rulers before. Um, but I haven't really thought, I, I think you'd have to put forth a lot of, uh, interesting politics behind it. I'm, I'm sure I, I'm almost positive ID, IGN did a really fun campaign leading up to the election for a video game president. Uh, so if you guys are interested at all in, in checking out those videos, uh, go check those out. Garrosh. Um, what's that? Garrosh. Gar what? <laughs> <laughs> so we can usurp him in a year? That wouldn't be a good way to lead the country, Josh. I don't. I, I think your vote is uh, your vote. Your, your vote's getting discarded. <laughs> All right, then, Karen. Oh. All right. Damn. Oh, so soon. So soon. soon. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's throw it out to uh, let's throw it out to our final caller here and see what he's got to say. Caller, you're on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from. Hello, everyone. Um, My name is Eduardo. I'm from Mexico. No. Oh, damn. Mexico. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hola. Hello. Who would you, you vote for uh, in, a, in, a, hang on. in, in a presidential election? Who would you vote for? Video game oh, character. The Overmind, hands down. The, the Overmind? Overmind from StarCraft. Good choice. Oh. Good choice. Good choice. Good choice. Both hail the Overmind. There we go, yeah. All right. So uh, you got a question for us. Throw it out to us. And, and, oh well, and it's about make fun um, of Darnell while you're at it. Free faction PvP about um, how upcoming MMOs and current MMOs are trying to implement uh, a system similar to Guild Wars 2's World of the World and uh, Dark Age of Camelot World of the World thing. Um, I think it's it's failing. Well, Guild Wars 2 is is proving that it's very difficult to balance and that. Uh, really hardcore PvPers can't really take it seriously because it's very difficult to balance and it's doomed to failure. That's what I think. And what what do you guys think? Here's the thing about large scale PvP like that is it's definitely something that if you're really really serious about like uh, balance based being like really like hardcore like I'm a badass in PvP sort of situations like if you want to like if you've been really into like arenas or battlegrounds or looking at something like planet side if you're really into call of duty or or halo or blacklight retribution or something like that it can be tough to really get into it for me it's more of a the, the idea of the large scale PvP isn't so much as a competitive almost esports sort of thing as it is almost like it's almost for the spectacle and it's for the experience itself it's to get in there and have it be something where it's like oh wow there's like like look at plant side for example we were in this galaxy and we landed and we went in the back and we took out this area and we took over this node and then we were able to take over the entire base and you sort of get um it was actually something that uh uh i was listening to something total biscuit put out a while back where he was talking about planet side too and he was saying uh, and I agree with this quite a bit, where he was talking about how it's it's about getting those sorts of stories and hanging out with some friends or a, a, a platoon or a guild or something like that, where you're... It's not about specifically being balanced and like having the the most enriching PvP experience directly. The PvP is just kind of there as a vehicle to create these large-scale wars that you end up going through and you feel like yeah this was this awesome thing that we as a group managed to do that's kind of my take on it what about do you, what do about you think that hold on um, do you think that maybe um when you know um, plan side two for example right you could go on the ground you go on the air you could do all that stuff do you think that maybe that has something to do with it because like it was too it's like you just got the ground and then you got oh that's all you got that's it like you're kind of limiting. So if, what happens what ends up happening is you go and you try to push with like a billion people it's like oh we're gonna zerg this bridge for like 15 days and that's all you do with just zerging this stupid ass bridge because you can't go around because ain't no other way or something that's pretty much it but like a plan side too it's like okay this this ain't working so we can go go back jump in a whole bunch of galaxies and fly over and do this and that whatever there's just more options you can actually do you actually be tactical with it instead of just zerging some stupid ass bridge constantly 
<laughs> well, what do you do in terms of, of, of dealing with balance on something like that? Because how, I, I, that's got to be what the, the, the hardest thing in, in a mass battle is, is where do you, you create that line of, 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 I'll use your bridge scenario. You're sitting there and, uh, against 100 people versus 3,000 people. Like this isn't, this isn't Spartans, you know, going up against like, it's, it's not physically, you can't, it's got to be a lot physically, uh, a lot more difficult to, to actually get through those, punch through those lines. But if you're not able to make any ground with, with the team that you have, it, it, it becomes an issue of balance, doesn't it? Because they don't want to overpower or make one group stronger well, than the other and able to push back against multiple forces. Well, yeah, and that's, that's why I think, I mean, there's, there's elements of balance in games like that. There's things that you can say, well, like, this strategy is just way too strong, so we need to, we need to nerf this, or, like, this particular weapon in something like Planet Side 2 is, is, like, maybe this weapon is too good, so we need to nerf that back a little bit. But ultimately, like, it's not something that can ever be perfectly balanced, because it's, it's kind of the point. Like, the whole, excuse me, the whole reason that three-faction PvP works is because it's imbalanced, because those numbers can, can get messed up. Because you got to think about it from the perspective, like the reason, the reason three factions, the reason that three is the magic number there, is because it means that you can have two groups of people fighting over a node, and then a third group comes up from behind and wipes out one of those, and you, you just kind of have this like, oh, or you know, they go over and they take over some other area, so that one faction can't end up dominating everybody, and that's that that that's kind of the. It's because it's imbalanced that it can even work to begin with. You're never going to have a situation like in a game like Planet Side. Uh, or honestly, I, I know that there's some there, there's some balancing in terms of population that goes in in World vs. World and Guild Wars 2, but even inside of a, a particular, like even just in the Eternal Battlegrounds in Guild Wars 2, okay, there's a whole bunch of people at this point right now, so we're going to lose the fight at this point because all the rest of our guys are off someplace else doing something else. That's just, that's part of how this large-scale combat even works to begin with. So I would say... Sure. I mean, if you're if you're looking for an experience that is that does have the extremely like balanced, very competitive nature sort of PvP, then yeah, the the large scale stuff, the world versus world, the the planet side two sort of thing may not be for you. For me, it's more about the experience of the extreme large scale combat. That's it's it's about the idea of being that group of people who held off against the much larger Zerg for a long time. We held off in the in the face of being. Uh, being confronted by something imbalanced, or we were able to get together this huge imbalanced army, corrupt this little group of guys, and just we threw our weight around all over the place, sort of thing. That's kind of the, that's kind of the point, honestly. All right, let's throw it out to one final final Twitter question here. Uh, once again, Sarah wants to know what is the most hated game ever. You guys got any uh, video games out there that, that just like absolutely in the back of your mind scratches you the wrong way and you just know that you loathe playing it? Although I guess why would you be playing it if you just know you absolutely hate it? I think for me, mine's, mine is uh, unfortunate. I love the games to death, but I get so angry when I'm playing them. Uh, Prince of Persia and God of War because camera changes absolutely screw up your navigation with the joystick and cause you to die again and again, and I can't tell you how many controllers I've broken because of that game. Um, and I think the other one that, that, that stands, the, the, the first game that ever threw me in, in, in like, a, I, I hate this game, I can't stand it, was Primal Rage. And it's, it, to this day, it's why I don't play fighter games, is because <laughs> wow. in Primal Rage, um, and I guess it, it, it happens a lot in fighter games, and it's just personally, it's why I don't enjoy them, is I would get juggled so much that from the start of the match all the way to the end, I couldn't get one move off of. I was constantly like falling, and then they'd hit me, and I'd get uh, hit before I was could even make a move, and that's how I would lose at fighter games. And, and I just got I I got so I would get so angry over how cheap it was that I just put down fighter games. I may Damn. be. I, I know a lot of people in chat right now for me are saying, "Oh yeah, Lore's gonna say Terra because Lore hates Terra," but really like. If we're if we're talking in the, from the perspective of a game that I hate, like I really hate, it's like I wish I'd never had. I wish this game had never came out. Mass Effect Three. Mass Effect Three. Ooh, damn! I, I loved the Mass Effect series until Mass Effect Three happened, and now I can't even look at it anymore. It's like I, I just I'm still trying to block that game out of my mind because it 
for me, it ruined the whole series. So if we're talking Disowned. about a game that I wish had never happened, Mass Effect 3, for sure. I wish that game had been anything else. Damn, I was going to say, like, Clop or something, but damn. Was, I mean... Don't lie, you love Clop. You, you hate uh, World of Warcraft. You love Clop. There we go, there we go. There's a clap. There's a clap for you right there. There you go. <laughs> I slow clap, but I just got one clap. That's all I got. There you go. All right, Darnell, you can follow him right down there at Darnell Sup. Be sure to follow him right here on Game Breaker TV, where he does a whole bunch of Let's Plays. Um, right here on Game Breaker After Dark, you can always get his sass that is always directed at me. Yep. You it's bring upon yourself know. every time. You act like I make this stuff up. <laughs> no one asked you to be so witty and catch the fact that I don't know how to talk. And Mr. Allen, you follow him right down there at Devilor. Be sure to catch the weekly Marmon and PST on tap. And then you have a new show, don't you? Yes. I'm looking at mobile games. It's called right, Just what's... the Tip because that's hilarious. All right, and moving on from that <laughs> one, before that gets out of hand, you can follow me at Mike Shaftnick right here. Be sure to follow us at Game Breaker TV and be sure to check out the website if you guys haven't already. We got a whole bunch of stuff coming in with MMO, video show related news, uh, a whole bunch of. Uh, World of Warcraft, Guild Wars. For those of you who are big Rift fans, we have resurrected the Sanctum. So be sure to check that show out. Keep it tuned right here at Game Breaker TV, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, lines are open every Tuesday night. You guys can call us and ask your questions live right here on Game Breaker TV. We'll see you guys next week. Like fingertips. Fingertips. Oh, it's funny. I thought you meant penis. Oh, I just wanted to say that before we stopped the recording. That's all.